Greetings and salutations to all of you folks out there. It's the second entry in the Patreon player critique series. This one's going to be for Out of Ammo, and the map is Settings. I'm going to say right off the bat that there's only a limited amount of specific advice that I can give on Settings because the build variety is tremendous. And since it is a team game, that brings in a lot of variables. So basically, I'm going to watch from Out of Ammo's perspective, give recommendations on what he should or should not be doing based on what I can see and we'll just hope for the best see how it turns out I'm probably gonna go over the initial build in great detail and then speed up the replay as the game goes on to try not to drag it out so long but we'll just see how much of a help we can be to it all right starting out with a mechs and two power generators and then a factory right off the bat I can tell you that that is not an ideal build order and I'm going to try to explain a little bit of the build order but uh, honestly, the best thing that you can possibly do in team games for this style of map for anything on a large scale like this is to watch good players replays. Go use the search function in the vault for, um, let's say, if you're wanting to do a sentence replay, you could search for Galactic Fear or um, SC Account, those people that are like top tier sentence players and copy one of their build orders so I do like the fact that we have a little bit of reclaim here and then heading off to the Hydra what I would recommend is going land factory first throwing down a mechs and then a bunch of power generators so that you can get maximum adjacency bonus to an air factory and you're gonna need like uh, six seven power generators and then with your land factory, use an attack move order. That is going to be alt plus right click to cue an engineer to a specific location. So drop the move order there, the attack move order. And what that's going to do is it's going to send an engineer there and it's going to reclaim all of the tree clumps it can in a very large radius. And each one of those tree clumps is going to net you about 100 power and 10 mass. 100 power is a lot. And that's going to give you the power you need to get that early air factory online. And the early air factory is the best thing that you can possibly have on the rock position in sentence. And what you do is, since you don't have all four mass extractors online early, uh, trying to snag a mechs upgrade, which since you are getting the reclaim now, that's not going to matter that much. But uh, I would recommend getting your early build done and not upgrading because you can see we've got super aggressive power, uh, mass stall coming in and uh, that never ends well. Minus 20 and the front player has just now gotten to the mass and is building a point defense. That's something else you need to keep an eye on. You need to keep an eye on how your other teammates are performing at the moment because if they're not doing certain things that you are counting on, like if you're counting on early reclaim and you see that they're obviously not doing it, you need to change your build order to accommodate those things. So yes, reclaim is there. What I usually do is my like third engineer, I think, the third engineer goes and picks up all of these rocks and I do not upgrade a mass extractor until after I have gotten my transport out um, so that I'm able to get all of my stuff online early. It's not worth the mass stall crippling your initial build to get that early upgrade done. You may be okay now that we're going to start seeing some mass flowing in. Yeah, you'll be fine. But it, it slows things down so very much right at the beginning. Okay, so we're getting power generators down. Obviously shooting for an air factory. And that is not technically correct, but whatever. We're not focusing on that. So everything is progressing reasonably well. In this slot, these two mass extractors are yours. This one is not. That is the air players. So that is 13, that is 13, this is 12, and that is um, 11 right there. And that's how that goes. Yes, those are yours. And then you want to spring for that island as quickly as you possibly can, preferably with a transport and a couple of engineers. If you just do not want to put it in your build and you're at this player level, you can probably get away with sending an engineer across the water. Um, but that is very, very slow, and if you're versus anyone who plays a fair... Why is red stealing mass extractors? That's weird. 
Um, if your verse is anyone uh, that is going to be in the slightest aggressive, they're going to get a transport over here before you can get an engineer over here. But if you park an engineer right here on the edge, you can edge build a land factory up on top. So we're still mass stalling pretty hard. That is not a good place to be at all. Like I was saying, it's not worth... Well, it's slightly better now. It's not worth getting the super duper early extra mechs upgrades to stall out your whole build order. It just doesn't work. So we got a land scout. I'm going to go ahead and bump up the speed one tick on this. Couple of air scouts out and going for a third. Looks like that might be a repeat build. Uh, nope, there's the transport. Coolio. Got to get that thing out there as quickly as possible for those extra five for a total of 18 mass extractors. I do believe that is correct if I'm not totally mistaken. That is going to be, yes, 12, 13. Okay. So 18 mass extractors. That gives you a whopping six more than the beach player. Seven more if you're counting this mass extractor that's supposed to belong to the beach and does not. So as the rock player, you theoretically should always win because you have a huge mass advantage. Now that doesn't always happen because sometimes the beach player will be able to rush you out of the water. That's kind of a hard thing to come back from as rock because it's a pain in the butt to get enough build power into the water to overcome a naval rush, but eh, typically you'll be fine. What you need to do is set up about four land factories right here that will be able to build engineers and send to those naval factories. So right now we're looking pretty good. We're plus mass, so definitely need to pick another mass extractor and upgrade it. Actually, two more, so we're about to have that one come online. Could handle three more and a little bit of a navy build here. T1 subs are not the way to go when you are building early navy. You definitely need to go for frigates because frigates have so much health that subs cannot kill them very quickly. And on the flip side of that, subs deal damage so slowly that by the time they kill frigates that have come here, you've already lost all your build power. Two frigates would actually have enough health to just let this single sub hurt them until they killed off every single engineer that was here. Until you can get five or six subs up, you're not dealing enough consistent damage to deal with frigates. So it, it's, it's just not a good idea. Build the frigates. They have enough HP to soak the damage. Should be the takeaway here. I don't know how many more ways I can restate that, but it's getting repetitively redundant already, so I'm just going to stop saying it in different ways. Okay, good to see that only one sub came out. So that sub, you can pretty much take a look here. When you've already got three naval factories online on the other side, that T1 sub's not going to do any good. So I really wouldn't even bother sending it because basically it's going to get killed and reclaimed and that's the end of it. This mass extractor, I always keep an eye out. And if people just refuse to claim mass extractors that should be theirs, then I will go ahead and take it anyway because it's better for you to have it than for nobody to have it. If they get upset about it later, you can give it back. But yeah, that mass needs to be flowing into your team one way or another. I'm going to go ahead and bump up another tick because we're basically done with all of the early build stuff. Now it's just observations about the game in general. So we're just going to power through this replay and see what happens. So right off the bat, one of the things that I do notice here is we're seeing a huge whopping disparity in score. 15 versus 11. And you can see that you've already got a ton of extra Navy online versus your other player. So what I would be doing is I would be building air and assisting either the front player or going super hardcore aggressive on this guy up here. Because the earlier you can overrun your opponent and win your navy, the earlier you can start focusing on other slots and winning the game as a whole. Alternately, you can stall your side because you know you have superior forces and you can go ahead and help your teammates out early, which would actually be a really good idea right here because South Sea was not very smart and went ahead and went for T2 Navy with zero supporting T1 Navy. So we're gonna have a couple of frigates and subs take out a T2 HQ unopposed, which is really, really screwed up. It looks like he started all his factories at the same time and that time was too late. So this would be a time 
<laughs> this would definitely be an opportunity to go assist a teammate and prevent a lot of issues from coming up later in the game. T1 bombers never hurt either. Rushing T1 bombers out to power through some of the frontline defenses. And here we can see a showcase of why T1 subs are ineffective. Plink, plink, plink. Plink, plink, plink. This is at plus three speed. And you can see how long it takes for a T1 sub to deal damage. It just doesn't work. Thankfully, the air player is being responsive. He's gonna throw out some torque bombers and some other things. Holy cow, Gray already has T2 Navy. That's not good at all for your south side. All right, so we have won it, but now we're seeing another problem. T2 air from white, and there is absolutely positively no anti-air at all. And what you need to do in this case is park in here, maintain your presence as much as you possibly can to prevent uh, this, and you need to be moved. There we go, moving the interceptors in to deal with the air threats. You do not want to let your opponent get back in the water, get that reclaim, and then come back to hurt you any mo even more. And then you want to be building shards like a madman. These anti-air, at the Tech 1 attack boats, these things have the highest damage output per mass of any um, naval-based anti-air. And they are deadly accurate, and they're fast as all hell. These guys can get across the entire pond very, very quickly. Um, their, their move speed is actually so high that they can keep pace with T1 bombers reasonably well, shutting down the turning radius so that bombers can't actually make two passes unless they swing very, very wide. So it's very, it's a really cool tool to use. Now T2 does work. You can get that cruiser out and that's definitely gonna knock anything out of the air, but you've got so many interceptors, you could have just used the interceptors to take care of it and stayed. You've got your, almost your entire Navy intact and just one lonely tort bomber harassing you. So this should be over here. And that would prevent Glenn Prue from getting back in the water. I do love the eco though. 150 per tick versus 107 it looks like. You can see that he is getting reclaim, 93. He's blipping up and down. He's reclaiming all of this stuff that was out here. And that's gonna end up biting you in the butt later. So, this was somewhat of a failed attack on the front. Not a complete failure. Some stuff is going to get through. Definitely need to hit that. But front looks pretty dang good at the moment. Right side Navy, not so much. And that mechs is killing me. It's eating a little piece of my soul as it sits there unclaimed. Ah. Ah. There's a strap bomber. That's not good. Let's see, we have some swift winds over here. Please, 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 please get in here. Two strap bombers. No ASF, nothing else. Corsius is just going to straight up kill the air player because the air player is not paying any attention. He has swift winds right over there, and he's just going to let himself die. Well, that's fun. 200 health, and there is no way that he's ever going to kill both of those strap bombers. Not even... Oh, he was building a shield. Crap. That bomb actually, the shield closed around the bomb already in the air. So that's the air player going poof, and that's pretty much going to be GG in a game like this. That leaves Corsius alive on a plan that never in a million years should have worked. And now he's going to be free to snipe everybody else. And this is the point where everybody basically throws up their hands and says, screw it, we lost. Now, theoretically... You could come back from this. You do have a fairly sizable group of swift winds and interceptors with which you can kill any strap bombers that may be remaining. You can flood your water with cruisers, although there are already T2 naval units online. Three destroyers at the snap of a finger. This is why you don't let people get back in the water. It's why it shouldn't happen. Uh, if you can kill those destroyers and get up in the build power, you can still stop this progression, but you got to move quickly. Finally getting that mechs and then moving back. There you go. Reclaim your resources. And as you are the player who is farthest ahead in your slot, you are in the best position to go air. 
So I would get your ACU on that resource allocation upgrade. You already have three T2 power generators. Um, I would bite the bullet, grab that upgrade. You're going to power stall, but you just got to do it. And then start spamming the ever-living hell out of engineers to get a T3 air factory online and start producing ASF. I know you're already getting the T3 upgrade, but you will not have the power to run it. You're going to have to build T3 P gens, and it would be more efficient just to go ahead and get RAS. Okay. Looks like that is a dead cruiser or destroyer or whatever it was. Run in. Don't let these guys do damage to you. Well, there's T2 torpedo launchers. Meh. You have so much more than he has. There is no reason that you should not own this right now. But uh, he's going to start building up his destroyers. He's got three here behind the torp launchers. Your exoduses do outrange those T2 torp. So you need to get in there and deal with it. And South Navy is looking worse and worse and worse as the game goes on. Ugh. Watch the gunships fall before the mighty Infinity class. Another couple of cruisers probably wouldn't hurt. We're about to see destroyers coming in insufficient. No oh no, those are T1 subs. What? Why did he start building T1 subs? That was one of the worst decisions that I've seen this game, which is saying something. Well, free to move in and take up residence. And look at that. It's so cute. He's going for T2 stationary artillery. Aw. I always love it when people do that because um, T2 station artillery is literally the single worst way to deal with Navy that there is. Every single faction has an option that outranges it except for Cybern, and Cybern is so hyper aggressive in the first place that it doesn't really need it. And there's the ACU! Focus fire that shield, which is actually not even on because he's apparently in power stall, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, nope, shield is online. No, it's not. All right. So at this point, with Navy 1 and laying fire into the base, you should switch to 100% cruiser spam. And torrents, yes, score. That's exactly it. So torrents and cruisers, and you will be able to obliterate literally half the map for the opposing side and really take control of this game. T3 scouts are up. Don't spam nothing but T3 scouts. You got to build some ASF because you need denial. You really need denial. I can appreciate the lack of power stall though. Well done on that. Getting these three T3 power generators online. Definitely what you should be doing. And this right here, that was a needless loss. I uh, could have backed that destroyer up a little bit out of reach of the Cerberus turrets and carried on plinking away at the T2 stationary artillery. And again, backing off of the shore needlessly. All of this, Eco, these T2 mass extractors, that I think, possibly even the T3 power generator is all in range of your destroyers. Strategic Maybe not the T3 power detected. generator. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Anyway, all of that is in range of your destroyer, so you should, should be able to get in there and eliminate all of that eco. And there goes the nuke, right for the build power. Whenever you hear a nuke, you should just start walking with your ACU. That That's pretty much just what you do. Aircraft carrier and torrent. The unit choices are good. But they need to be moving over here much more quickly. The, the spawn should be over that direction. I can't believe you survived that. Holy cow. And now there's so much mass available. All of this should be assisting this. So that you can get that up as quickly as you possibly can. All right. 
Rainbow Dash has been defeated. Who was that? Oh, the front player just quit. Really? Really? Oh, the Novaks killed him. Well, that was exactly what he shouldn't have done. <laughs> you can defeat one Novax just by building T2 shields. Like, two T2 shields, and you assist one of them, and I think you can pretty much infinitely deny a Novax. It's kind of sad, actually. Um, yeah, that was, that was pointless. Strat Bomber's coming up again. There have been scouts spamming all game. And scouts are nice, but you can't actually get area denial with scouts. Your opponent only has strat bombers. He's got like 5 ASF. So if you had even a dozen to 20 ASF, you would be able to kill off all those strat bombers. No problemo. And there is so much mass going to waste. And I do realize that you don't have the build power to utilize it. But still, there should be something that you can do. Another thing, a donut. I, okay, a donut is almost never a good idea. Almost never. But in this specific instance, I can actually say that a donut would be a really good idea. Because your opponents have no anti-air. They have no ASF. You could just build a donut and kill all of them. Like, it really wouldn't be that hard to do. It would actually win the game at this point, I think. You could build that donut right here. You have enough mass and storage to almost build the donut. You could build it with every single engineer that you have assisting it. You'd have a donut in, like, 30 seconds. And you would be able to kill off basically everything on this side with that. As long... Oh, Strap Bomber took out Survival Boy. As long as you didn't fly over this crap, um, because that would kill your donut. So you could go this way, you could go up that way, and then into the back. And there's a whopping three Sams. And the GG is thrown. There's a whopping three Sams in the back. Um, so yeah, easy kill on that one. Anyway, lots of random advice. Sentins is kind of hard to... To give specific advice on simply because of the wide variety of things that can and should be happening. But hopefully that gives you some ideas of how to proceed. Not bad on the naval play. Not bad at all. You did pretty well on that. Just in general, there's a lot of stuff that can be cleaned up and then less waste and being more helpful, I think, would be the two biggest things. But you are, let's see, you are a 500 rank. Well done for a 500, actually. That is not bad at all. There's a lot of people at that rank level that cannot do that well. So if you focus a little bit and apply yourself, I think you'd rise up pretty quickly. Easily get up to 1,000 rank if you just implement things slightly better. All right, that's going to wrap it up for me. Hopefully you guys learned something from this cast. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the cast on Thursday.